Howdy doody buckaroonies, this is the Sensil Morph. 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 And I think you get the idea. This is the Sensil Morph, and much like its name implies, you can really morph this into whatever you want it to be by slapping on a different overlay, even on the fly, and turning it into whatever type of controller you need for a given situation. The technology behind the Sensil Morph is also open for development as a touch-based input device in a variety of different languages, and you can even design your own overlays for the Sensil Morph without needing to write a single line of code. With that being said, calling the Morph a MIDI controller or an MPE controller is kind of like being that kid in high school who takes his mom's 98 Dodge Neon, slaps on a spoiler and some rims from Walmart, takes it to the racetrack, and calls it a race car. While it's not technically wrong, it's maybe missing the point a bit. Similar to things like the Mod Dwarf, or Duo X, or Organelle, or Xynthian, or the Arduino synths you can do, or anything like that, what really gets me excited about this Sensil Morph here is that it's not just a thing that does something, it's a platform to enable creative people to do creative things. Now, sadly, your boy here is not really smart enough to know how to code something and make this do something really cool. However, based on what I could understand of the API and the technology behind this thing, the applications as a touch base input device are pretty insane. With that being said, in this video today, we're here to answer one simple question. What is this thing and why should you be excited about it as a music producer? For more gear, plugin reviews, insightful, terrible jokes, and sound design stuff, be sure to subscribe to the channel down below. And if you have a request for a future video, let me know down in the comments. So, this is the Sensil Morph itself, and if I had to compare this to something, it's like if a laptop trackpad was gigantic and put inside the shell of an iPad. It feels really well built and is actually surprisingly hefty despite how incredibly thin this thing is. This is a deeply powerful device that offers an incredibly sensitive and accurate multi-dimensional touch input and I think is actually a great solution for a budget-friendly MPE controller that also features Bluetooth connectivity for wireless playing all without compromises on the quality of the actual device itself. This guy comes in at only $249 with a single one of these overlays, or you can select different packages to get the overlays you'd like. I personally picked up the Creative Producers Kit, which comes with this music production overlay, as well as the really cool and really fun Bukla Thunder overlay. Then I also picked up the piano overlay just for something a bit more traditional to play with, as well as this fun little travel case in this fabulous and stunning blue, because it's my favorite color, to take this thing out with me on the go. If you're just getting started with music production, I think this is also a great choice for a first controller if you grab a few of these different overlays as it kind of acts like an all-in-one solution to different applications and different approaches to production. And it also includes a copy of Bitwig Studio 8 Track so you have a DAW to get started and a copy of Arturia Analog Lab Lite. Since it's also marketed as a portable device, the build quality is also obviously pretty important, and I think durability is solid all around, as the sensor grid material itself is actually flexible by design, at least to my understanding, and the device itself feels nice and sturdy. I personally don't think I'd be concerned about tossing this in my bag and taking it out with me for some remote sessions or taking it along to a coffee shop for a session. The Morph surface itself is comprised of around 20,000 individual sensors or sensils, and these can detect a huge range of pressure from as light as 1 gram to as heavy as 5 kilograms. One of the most impressive things about this, I think, is its accuracy. I've got the Sensil app running here with the visualizer, and you can see that there. If I have two fingers on the morph and move them close together, it can still tell them apart. Even when my fingers are like almost right on top of each other, I can still have individually detected input, which is just insane. With that being said, this level of sensitivity does take a bit of getting used to with things like a piano VST. It might take some velocity curve tweaking to get it to a playable state, and you don't really have the feedback of a traditional synth action or weighted key bed, but we'll talk about that more in a minute. The highlight of the Morph is that it offers a variety of these overlays, and what's really awesome is you can actually swap them on the fly without having to restart the device. So I can switch from my piano overlay here to program some synths or something, and then hop over to the music production overlay to start laying out my drums with some automation, and then switch out to the Bukla Thunder overlay here to 
get creative and weird with something else, all without having to reset anything or stop my session and reboot the controller. This, in my opinion, is the real highlight of the Morph. Rather than needing many different specialized controllers, you have a single device that can just do everything. There are a variety of overlays available in the shop that cover everything from music production-oriented overlays to video editing control surfaces and even gaming controllers. The Sensil app also offers a way to design your own custom overlay with the Innovators overlay, so you can lay out a custom controller for whatever you need, slide in a prototype overlay, and get to work without needing to write a single line of code to really make a surface that's your own. So the next question is how does this thing work and feel as a MIDI controller? What I really like about the Morph compared to some of its competitors is that it's not some weird exotic controller. One of my biggest reservations about getting an MPE controller was that some of them were designed in such a way that it's almost like having to learn a new instrument, and I really don't want to do that. I'd rather just pick something up and get to work with it and just, you know, get things done. As you can probably tell, the Morph and its various overlays are all based around traditional controllers and input methods that make it easy to pick up and just get started with. The overlays also feature macro controls, which you can see along the top here, which can be used for things like the transport controls of your DAW and switching the octave, or you can even customize these macro to do whatever you like. I'm also a big fan of the surface itself and the controller material. Rather than a squishy bed, this is a fairly rigid material that has some grooves in it that naturally provide a bit of a guide to your hands as you use it. The piano overlay took a little bit of getting used to though, as I have gigantic hands and freaky spider fingers, so the keys are pretty close together, but really within a few hours I hardly noticed the difference transitioning from the morph to my other controllers. As a standard MIDI controller, the Morph itself works incredibly well and is really responsive to touch input. One thing I missed about my old MPK controller was the sensitivity of the drum pads, and this controller just absolutely crushes that in every possible way. With that said, the controller itself is also so sensitive that it does take a little bit of getting used to. Because you don't have the traditional physical feedback of something like a key bed or a squishy material providing resistance, even the softest touches register as kind of a mid-level velocity. However, with a little bit of practice, this really wasn't much of an issue, and for instruments where this matters like piano or velocity-sensitive synth patches, tweaking the velocity curves within the VST is more than enough to resolve this based on your playing style. So I've got pigments open here to talk about using the Morph as an MPE controller. As I'm sure you know, MPE opens up a whole new dimension of functionality and features to your favorite synth so long as they support them, and it brings almost unreasonable numbers of creative possibilities right to your fingertips. I'll be doing another video soon about MPE in more detail as well, because it's just a pretty neat topic. Because it supports MPE, the Morph here is also capable of outputting polyphonic aftertouch, which for some reason is a bit of a rarity in the hardware MIDI keyboard world, and most hardware synths like my trusty Novation Peak here and software synths as well are capable of receiving polyphonic aftertouch. So this means even if you don't have any MPE capable VSTs or hardware, the Morph can bring some awesome per note expression to your favorite synths without any additional setup required. With that being said, as I'm sure you know, MPE is quickly being adopted with firmware updates and software updates for lots of hardware synths and VSTs, and I'm confident we'll be seeing a lot more of it in the future as the norm, making the Morph, I think, a great stepping stone into the world of polyphonic expression, if not the most solid choice, especially considering the price point.
So I think that about wraps it up for this video, and that is the Sensil Morph. This is available right now, and I honestly can't recommend this enough, especially given the very affordable price point to get started. The Morph itself is well built, it's a badass MPE controller, it's lightweight, it's portable, it's accurate, it's sensitive, and it's flexible as a multi-dimensional touch input device, and just gets high marks all around from me. Thanks for tuning in and hanging out with me. As always, I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. So thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and I will see you guys again soon.